uh, once more I thank God for this time that we meet and we hear from the scriptures. Amen. Uh, I want you to know people that the world has nothing to offer to the people who know Christ. Money, food, popularity, fame, a fat bank account will never satisfy the human soul. Because you see, one thing about a person is that there are things which will, not, will, which will just go bad even if you have money. For example, when you are told that maybe in your body you have got a, ter a, a terrible disease which can be healed, your money, your popularity, your fame, your background might not even help you. That's the time when you need the word of God. So this afternoon, we want to look at scripture. What I have decided to do is that I just want to explain scripture as it is. So that in case someone is listening, they will hear the word of God and they can make up their mind that I want to get saved before I die. One thing for sure is that you and me, we are all going to die. So today we want to look at a subject which is very, very confusing to many people. But when you follow the scriptures or when you follow the tenets of scripture, there is nothing complicated. So let us go to the book of Jeremiah chapter 18. Jeremiah chapter 18. We are just going to read eight verses from verse 1 to verse 8. And then I will introduce my topic after we read the scriptures. So it's Jeremiah chapter 18, verse 1 to verse 8. Someone read for us, please. The word which came to Jeremiah from the Lord, saying, Arise and go down to the potter's house, and there I will cause thee to hear my words. Then I went down to the potter's house, and behold, he wrote a work on the wheels, and the vessel that he made of clay was mud in the hand of the potter. So he made it again another vessel. It seemed good to the potter to make it. Then the word of the Lord came to me saying, O house of Israel, can't I deal with you as this potter, says the Lord. Behold, as the clay is the potter's hand, so are you in my hand, O house of Israel. At what instant I shall speak concerning a nation and concerning a kingdom to pluck up and to pull down and to destroy it. If that nation against whom I have pronounced turn from thy evil, I will repent of the evil that I, I thought to do unto them. Okay. Is, you, you, have, you, you go to verse 8. Okay. I will ask you to stop there and then I will read Romans chapter 9, the book of Romans chapter 9. I will begin reading from verse 20. 21 and 22. So from the book of Romans chapter 9, I will read two verses. So I go. Verse 21 or verse 20. O oh men, who are you that replaced against God? Shall the thing formed say to him that formed it, Why did you make me like this? Or oh, has not the potter a right over the clay? From the same lamp to make one part a vessel unto honor and another unto dishonor. Amen. I want to talk about a subject which I will title The Potter and the Clay. The Potter and the Clay. You see, there is a teaching out there which is being propagated which says we human beings we were created by God and God has got a right to do what he wants to do with us as a potter has got a right to do what he wants with a vessel I don't have any disputes with that but we want to look at the right context of the way this issue is presented to us. You see, 
I grew up in Matebeleland in Zimbabwe. And I saw people who made pots or vessels out of clay. You know what they did? They woke up in the morning, they took their shovels, their hose, and went to the bush and to look for a certain type of clay to make vessels. You see, when vessels are made, they are not just made from any type of soil. There's a type of soil which when you make a vessel, within 30 minutes, the vessel will crack. Do you know that I am holding a vessel in my hand? This is from clay. This is clay. Special type of clay which made this thing. So now, what I want to show you is that when people in my country were going out to dig and get some form of strong soil, they mixed it with water so that they may even experiment to see that when they mix the clay and the water, it will not even crack. So what am I trying to show you? I'm trying to show you that when someone makes a vessel, their aim is not to destroy it or their aim is not for it to crack. I want to ask you a question. Who has ever seen someone who goes out to make a vessel just to destroy. I am going to make this vessel just to destroy it after I have made it. My aim, my motive is to go out, dig some soil, mix it with water, create a vessel and then after that destroy it. Is there such a person? Can you answer me, people? Who has ever thought of such a thing happening? What am I trying to show you? I'm trying to show you that when a porter is making a vessel, his aim, his motive, is that not even one single vessel must be destroyed or must crack. So now, there is a teaching which says, we human beings, we are like vessels in the hands of God, and God can just destroy us. Having asked you a very simple and straightforward question using the example of an ordinary porter. Who has ever seen a porter who makes a vessel just to destroy it? So now when you have this in your mind, we start from Jeremiah chapter 8, uh, ch chapter 18. I hope you understand that now there is no porter who makes vessels for destruction. Imagine a man wakes up just to make mobile phones to destroy. Daniel, do you think it's possible? Just to wake up to make products. Just, I'm going to make this one and after that I'm going to destroy it because I've got the power over it. Does it work that way? No. What am I trying to answer you? I am just trying to answer the question that there are people who teach that God created certain people so that he can destroy them. There is no such a thing. As a potter cannot just wake up, dig some, 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 some soil, create a vessel just for the mere excitement and motive of destroying it. That does not happen. So when you understand what I have said, just this analogy which I have given, you will start from there. Jeremiah chapter 18 verse 1. Can you read for me please? Jeremiah 18 verse 1. The word which came to Jeremiah from the Lord saying, Arise and go down to the potter's house, and there I will cause thee to hear my words. So do you see, Jeremiah was instructed, Arise and go down to the potter's house. And when you get there, I will tell you what to do. Verse 2. Then I went down to the potter's house, and behold, he wrote a work on, on the wheels. And the vessel that he made of clay was marred in the hand of the potter. So he made it again another vessel. Okay, what is that? Jeremiah goes down to the potter's house. He sees the man is busy molding a pot. 
He's trying to make it very straight. And then what does the Bible say? And then he says, he saw that it was mud. What does that mean? He saw that it was not straight the way he wanted it to be straight. He did not take the shape he wanted. So it was like it was bent. It was not straight in his hands. What is this showing us? It's showing us that the porter was trying to make it straight, but when he examined it, he saw that there was something wrong, so he did not want the shape he had made. What happened? Verse 3. Oh, okay, verse 2, it was mad. So he made it again another vessel. It seemed good to the porter to make it. So listen, when the person who was making the pot saw that it was not good. Was it his aim to destroy it? Can you answer me please? Was it his aim? What was his aim? He wanted it to be a straight vessel fit for his use. I told you about my grandmother. Oh, I didn't tell you. She used to make these vessels and she was selling them. Not at all in one day did I hear her say, oh, today I'm going to make vessels so that I can destroy them. No, all the vessels which she was making, she wanted to sell them because I remember there were people who came to our home to buy vessels from her because she was a very good at making these things. What am I trying to show you? I'm trying to show you that when God told Jeremiah to go down to the potter's house, he wanted to teach Jeremiah a lesson. Verse 3, what was it? Then the word of the Lord came to me saying, O house of Israel, can't I do with thee as this potter? Says the Lord. Behold, as the clay is in the potter's hand. Listen! So are you in my hand. O house of Israel, have I not a right to do what I want with you as the potter has got a right to do what he wants with a vessel which is mad. What are we seeing there? We are seeing that God's aim was not to destroy Israel. But there was something wrong with Israel and then God is forced to destroy them because there is something which he does not want about them. What was it? You find it in verse 8. And then we'll come back. Just read verse 8 for us. What was wrong? If that nation against whom I pronounce turn from their evil, I will repent of the evil that okay. I thought to do unto them. So verse 8 is showing us what was wrong with Israel. What was the cause of them being destroyed? What is it? They should repent. But what did they do? They refused to what? To repent. And then a preacher comes to you and me. They tell you God created certain people so that he can destroy them as the porter was created by the, the as the vessel was created by the porter so that it can be destroyed. Here is my point. No porter creates a vessel for destruction. There are people who teach the dead doctrine that there were certain people who were created by God just to be destroyed. As a porter, he has got a right to destroy a vessel in his hand. There is no such a thing. This is just an introduction to what I will teach about the porter and the vessel. So now, I want to show you something. I have shown you that no vessel is created for destruction by a person who makes it. This is the same concept which God says to Jeremiah. Jeremiah, go down to the house of the porter and see how he makes a pot or a vessel. And then my words will come to you. Verse 4. Jeremiah 18.4. And the vessel that he made of clay was mad in the hand of the potter. So he made it again another vessel. It seemed good to the potter to make it. So do you see? 
that let me just give you an example of my grandmother she will be given an order a woman will come and say please make me a pot i want size five and then she will make that pot and then as long as she sees that it's not yet ready she will destroy that pot she will destroy she will not make a kettle out of it she will still want to make a what a good vessel unto honor do you know what the bible says it says in the house of god in the house of god there are vessels of honor and there are vessels of dishonor you are going to be a vessel of honor if you page yourself if you page yourself what verse are you reading what verse are you on? read it let's hear and the vessel that he made of clay was married in the hand of the potter so he made it again another vessel that seemed good to the potter so do you see that what he did he just reconstructed the same vessel to make it straight because someone is waiting for it as an order I am just talking in natural terms when we are looking at a potter making vessels. So now there is no such a thing that hey, God can destroy us because he created us for destruction. There is no such a thing. You will see a person who creates vessels just for destroying. Let me say it again. Yeah, vessels. My vessels. I'm going to make this one for good use. This one I'm going to destroy it. This one I'm going to make it, I'm going to destroy it. This one I'm going to destroy it. Is there such a person? Can you imagine someone employing people for that? Because today we, you know, I remember in Zimbabwe, in Zimbabwe there's, a, there's a place where it's called Pulawayo Potaris, where they make cups in what? In, in bulk. And you picture these guys employing people so that they can make cups to destroy. What a foolish potter who will do such a thing. So that's the same with God. God created every human being so that they can what? They can be useful. Whether you are a drunkard, whether you are a prostitute, whether you are whatever form of sin you are, God expected the best out of you. But the fact that one day you are going to be destroyed in his hands, is because you have refused to repent. Verse 5. Then the word of the Lord came to me, saying, O house of Israel, can I do with thee as this potter? Says the Lord. Behold, as the clay is in the potter's hand, so are you in my hand. So do you see? He says, house of Israel. Am I not allowed to do with you like the potter is doing with the clay, which is not shaping up? You know, in England, in English, they say, shape, what? Shape out or ship out. What do they say? Shape in or ship out. There's something, there's a, a quotation where they say that it's either you take shape or you ship out, you go away. Why? Take the right, do the right thing or you are chased. So this is the same context which God is talking about the potter. He is saying, since the potter is holding a mad vessel, and he has tried by all means to, straight, to straighten it and it can't be straight he is forced to destroy it not because he wanted to create it for destruction he wanted to create it for a good use don't listen to this gospel which says there are certain people who were created by God so that God can create it, can destroy them there is no such a thing Romans 9 verse 20. Let's go to Romans 9. Romans 9 verse 20. We understand now the issue of the potter. That no potter makes a vessel to destroy it. Every vessel which the potter makes, he wants it to be of use. The same thing with every human being who was created by God. God wanted them to be good and holy. Let's read verse 20. Nay, but O men, who art thou that repliest against God? Shall the thing forward, shall the, shall the thing formed say to him that I formed it? Why hast thou made me thus? 
He is not the potter power over the clay of the same lamp to make one vessel unto honor and another unto dishonor. What if God willing to show his wrath and to make his power known endured with much long suffering the vessels of wrath fitted to destruction? Verse 23. And that he might make known the riches of his glory on the vessels of mercy, which he had afore prepared unto glory. Even us whom he has called, not of the Jews only, but also of the Gentiles. Amen. Verse 22, or verse 20, Romans 9, 21, 22, 23, shows us something here. What is it which is showing us? It is showing us the same context which we saw in Jeremiah chapter 18. Read Jeremiah 18 verse 8 for me again and then I will show you that the context is about sin. Jeremiah 18 verse 8. That is the people who don't want you to repent. You see, when you repent, it's your choice. Repentance is something which God allows you to do on your own. Not he forces you to do it. Can you read verse 8? Jeremiah 18 8. If that nation against whom I have pronounced turn from their evil, I will repent of the evil that I thought to do unto them. This, this time? And at what instant I shall speak concerning a nation and concerning a kingdom to build and to plant it. If I do evil in my sight, if, if it do evil in my sight, that it obey not my voice, then I will repent of the good. Listen! Wherewith I said I will benefit them. Listen! All God is saying is that the people who are going to be destroyed are people who have refused to what? To repent. Not that he created certain people for destruction. That's heresy. God created every human being for a purpose when he created adam and eve it was for a purpose no way do we read in the scriptures where it says god created certain people for hell but it's a perverse gospel which is brought into the world so that people are confused that there were people who were created for hell and there were people who were created for heaven there is no such a thing Every human being, when God created them, he wanted them to go to heaven. That is the reason why the Bible says God is not happy when the wicked die and go to hell. How can God be happy with the death of a sinner when it is he who created the people to go to hell? It does not make sense. So what have, you, what have I done? I have made this, this uh, segment... I will title it The Potter and the Clay, Part 1. I did not explain the whole of Romans 9. You remember I promised you that the Calvinistic theory of predestination and election, I will take it step by step. Now I am now taking the issue of the potter, the clay, and the vessels. So now what I want you to know today is that repent. Turn away from sin. Turn away from sin. Turn away from fornication. Turn away from adultery. You know, there are people who say, people go to hell because their names are not written in the book of life. Why is someone's name not written in the book of life? Because they disobeyed. I have got kids who go to school. What causes you to be marked absent? You are marked absent because you did not go to what? To school, isn't it? You are not marked absent before school time comes to show that you are in school. They mark you absent because they see that you did not come to school. So your crime is not being marked absent. Your crime is that you did not go to school. So you are not having a, an issue with the school because you were marked absent. You have an issue because you did not come to school. Are we together? So when you are marked absent, you are not saying, ah, the, my case was, I was marked absent. No, your case was you did not go to school. That resulted in you being marked absent. The reason why people's names are not written in the book of life is because they disobeyed. And then we talk of foreknowledge. 
What is foreknowledge? Or predestination? I know that France is stronger than Croatia. And France is going to win, maybe, because they are stronger. When France wins, I am not the one who caused the France to win. I knew. So my knowledge caused me to say it before it happened. But I'm not the one who caused it to happen. The same concept with God. God is all-powerful, yes. But he allows you to do what you want because he has given you a will. You can fornicate. You can commit adultery. Why? It is God's will for you to do your will. Let me put it this way. I have got a wife. When I chose her, I did not force her. And when she, cho she, she, she chose me, she didn't force me. We agreed on getting married. You can ask me, who was the one who made the final decision? We all made a decision. It was her will that she loved me, and it was my will that I loved her. And a marriage came because our wills were done. Imagine if I said, I want this woman, and she says, I don't want this man. It's too ugly. What would have happened? What would have happened? No marriage, eh? Why? It's a two-way thing. You propose someone and they agree. You know, I remember when she went to, to her home in Mutari. They were saying, oh, you find your own man, yeah? You chose Nestle. He's a nice man. And at my home, they were saying, oh, you got a good woman. Are we together? Why? Choice. You can so choose something which has not chosen you. So when God chose us, we chose him. Do you know that it's possible for God to choose you and you can choose Islam? How many Muslims do we have? Is it God who caused them to love Islam? No, their love is Islam. Why? They have a will for Islam. There are people in Africa who are worshipping dead people. Why? God is saying, come to me. Come to me, all you who labor. And they are saying, I will worship my dead father. Why? It's their choice. And God honors that choice. But he says, judgment day is coming. Thank you.